Banker and Trevor, and he's going to stop and tell us a little bit about what he did here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our fine small town this morning. I'm glad you want to wander through our town and learn a little bit about it. <laughs> this is my office. This is where I started banking here in Trevor, and uh, my name is Ralph H. Moore. I was born in Mercer County in Pennsylvania in 1845, and I wandered west when I reached a young adulthood and moved to Tama City, and there I developed a relationship with Mr. Brooks, who was banking in Tama at that time. When Trer was platted, he developed, or he pondered the idea of starting a bank here in Trer. And soon after the first train rolled into town, which was in 1873, eight days later, I started banking over a dry goods container just like this. My bank wasn't a very fancy institution, as you can see, and so we only had a tent to cover my head until we um, rented a building down where the clinic is today. That building looked like this back in its day, right here. At that time, when Trer started, there were only three buildings in town. And within six months, there were already over a hundred buildings either completed or in process of being built. Imagine that, going from three buildings to over a hundred in less than six months. It's amazing. Lack of committees, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, our, our bank eventually occupied a building on the southwest corner, like I pointed out down here, of Walnut Street and Second, and this is what it looked like. An 1879 history of Tama County quoted uh, or described the bank as saying, No bank in the county is more secure or elegantly or conveniently fitted up. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at this picture, I don't see a lot of elegance or conveniently fitted up. But in its day, it sure must have been. The banks, or the Bank of Brooks and Moore, served the people of this town until 1898, when Mr. Brooks passed away. And I found it was necessary then to incorporate the bank and I brought on 50 stockholders to help um, form the bank. Back in that day, this is what I looked like. Now I know I've shortened my hair, keeping up with the times, but I wasn't bad looking back then. And I lost the mustache, yes. Keeping up. Well, that bank that we formed with the 50 stockholders, Tama Jim Wilson, was our first, elected our first bank president <coughs> at that time. Then in 1883, we built a brand new building on the same corner where this was. So although it was elegant, we tore it down and we built our own that was fitted for the bank. Six years later, we were on the corner up here um, on this corner and on the very end here you can see in the inscription on the top and maybe not here but as you get up there the Brooks and Moore um, fittings and markings at the top of the bank. At that time we applied for a charter to um, operate as the first National Bank of Trer. Have you ever heard of that? The first National Bank of Trer. Well we operated for 75 years in that location and when Trer had its uh, um, celebration in 1948 for 75 years we were able to celebrate 75 years of banking even though we had weathered many financial panics and many depressions we from the very beginning pursued a conservative policy believing that the safety and the security of our deposits were paramount for our patrons when my life ended in 1913, I passed these same principles on to my son, K.P. Moore. 
he continued providing the same services and same sound business practices as I did. One thing I'd like to point out to you that I'm proud of that my son did, and I'll show this to you, this is a bank note from the National Bank of Traer. And I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before, but there's only 26 that we know of in the world today. The date is struck as 1948, and it's signed by K.P. Moore. And it's dubbed National Currency. Now, I don't know that any of you are old enough to know that National Currency became a valuable thing because each town pretty much had its own banking and its own currency. And unless you were carrying gold coinage, your currency might not be good in Toledo or Waterloo. And so when, when my son KP brought this national currency into existence in Traer, it was a good thing for our people. And it helped move goods and services beyond our community here, which is probably one of the reasons why when you look up and down this street here today, we still have buildings standing, businesses occupying these buildings that other towns don't have. Well, eventually, our bank moved again. And in 1956, we moved into the building that's now occupied by Dom's Employee Insurance, just behind us here. The building was built in 1890 by the founders of the Traer State Bank. Sometime, if you look up to where it says Traer State Bank, you'll see a few uh, holes that are, um, or chips that are um, taken out of that area. And that's where our sign covered the original Traer State Bank. They occupied this building before us and then they were um, shut down during the Depression era. Later that building was occupied by Robert Powell and then later James Logan. And then Dick Doms bought it for his insurance office in 1970 or in 1973. Well, a little bit more about the personal side of banking in Traer. Throughout the years, I was determined to help folks get a start in their new life in Traer, to help them on their enterprises, to see them through the emergencies that they might have had. If you ever get an opportunity to read my obituary, <laughs> written by E.E. E. Taylor, it's nearly poetic. We were good friends, friends like brothers throughout the years. When his building burnt down, I extended my sympathy at his loss and I went to him and I told him his credit would be good up to the legal limit without interest for a period of six months while he rebuilt. When the first opera house burned to the ground in 1900, E.E. E. Taylor and I felt there was a need for the community to have entertainment. And we decided upon ourselves that we would offer to pay the first half of the $15,000 that it would take to build a new opera house if the community would only raise the rest. A ladies' opera house association was formed and money was raised to build a new opera house. And in five years, we had musical troops from the New York stage and, and uh, various other large cities that would perform at the Opera House. Now it's my understanding that the fine people who help organize this today, who work at the museum in their spare time, that they are putting together an exhibit that is uh, about the Opera House. And someday I think you'll see that the Moore family was quite involved in developing the entertainment side of Traer. Well, my wife, May, was one of five women who signed the original financial note and charter to develop the Carnegie Public Library that we have behind us. That's the way things got done in our small town. When people saw a need, they put forth the effort and put forth the energy that it took to build the town, just like it's being done today. There's still much of that spirit alive if you look at what's going on around us today. Another important aspect of the town's history is that of the fire department. 
I'm proud to say that I was a charter member of the fire department. In fact, a lot of people don't remember me for banking, even though I banked here for 40 years before my son, before I passed away and my son took over. But we started the Traer Fire Hose Team in 1879. We named it the Wide Awake Engine and Hose Company. <laughs> Not a name that you probably would hear a fire company name. The Wide Awake Engine and Hose Company. I was very proud to be the first assistant fire chief. The bank helped secure the funds for the uniforms of the firemen, and our men practiced hard. Not only were they competent in fighting fires, but they were very good in tournaments. Now, we think of tournaments today as squirt the uh, barrel down the line. But back then, here's our Traer Fire team in 1894. Back then, we'd have 16 or so fellows pull this hose cart harnessed like horses to wherever the fire was, hook up the couplings to the uh, cisterns or the source of water, whether that be the creek or cisterns, and they would compete in tournaments to see how fast they could get that done. Well, we won the state tournament in 1891, in 1893, and then in 1894, we got this invitation $2,500 in cash prizes in Iowa City from the Iowa Firemen's Association for their competition. And we won, the, for the third time, the state tournament. And we won this silver belt. And it's, it's marked with each of the years that we won it. And then we got permanent possession of this belt because we ran, won it for three years. This is on display, typically, um, at the fire department in its trophy case. If it's not there, it's probably at the museum or being cared for, polished, buffed, shined, and lovingly tended to by the Rumens. <laughs> you may not borrow it. <laughs> well, Traer won that possession and we we're very proud of it. In fact, when we came home from that tournament, here's how we were greeted. A thousand or more people came out and met us in town. Now this is in the middle of the summer and look how we're dressed back then. And you wonder, why did I cut my hair and take my mustache off? But these people came out to greet us and then A.L. Ames escorted us to the Opera House where we had words and celebrations for our endeavors. Now I'm an old man and I can't remember everything, but if you have any questions or concerns that you'd like to bring up about banking in our fair community or questions for me about our history, now is a good time to ask. And I'll see if I can recall those things. Yes? What were the percentage rates for mortgages? <laughs> People were very pleased to have their deposits secure. And as far as the rates of interest that we charged, I know that right now we're still looking at historical lows. So as far as being specific, I can't say, but I would imagine in the 5 to 6% range. Any other questions? Well, we have many other stories to share with you today, and I hope you have a great day, and God bless you folks. Thank you. Good job.